this is an air pump for the water treatment plant and you know they're quite expensive but they can be rebuilt and I've been writing the dates down here you can see this one's been rebuilt four times already and uh, it just died on me this morning so it's time for another rebuild so I'm going to walk you through this and I've done this enough times I've learned a few tricks so uh, stick around to the end of the video I've got some tips that will really help you out Okay, so my first tip for you is, in my experience, these things last about 18 months before they need to be rebuilt. So what I did is I put a reminder on my calendar 18 months ago when it was repaired the last time to buy a repair kit. And I bought this kit three weeks ago and today the pump died. So 18 months seems to be pretty accurate uh, for the lifespan for me at least. And so Think about going ahead and ordering these uh, about 18 months after your last rebuild. Uh, I don't want to have it at my house so long that it's 18 months old before I use it and you know some of the parts may deteriorate a little bit but I don't want to wait till the pump dies and then find out it's out of stock somewhere. So there's different kits you can get. Uh, they come with different levels. You can buy a kit that has only the two diaphragms and uh, so that's one option I'll get the little bit larger kit that also comes with the new air filter air filter gasket and the gasket that goes between the lower deck and the uh, second layer uh, you don't need to replace this every time I'll have a look at it if it looks good I may not fool with this one but I've got it anyway um, and so uh, let me walk you through this Okay, first thing we're going to need to do is remove this Phillips screw on the top. We're going to remove that lid. There's the gasket. We'll clean this up inside and uh, there's new gaskets here that we'll install. And there's our air filter. And as expected, it's pretty nasty. You can wash these and reuse them, but I'm just going to install the new one. Okay, we've got four screws around the perimeter. Not too dirty on the inside. I'll clean this whole case up before I put it back together. Now then, we're going to remove this sound deadening blanket. Set that aside. Now, the diaphragms on each end are held in place with four Phillips screws and you'll need to remove this little clamp off the hose. So just go ahead and remove those screws. Right. There's also a nut right here in the center of the diaphragm that needs to be removed. And you can see this diaphragm is torn. This is typically what happens. Anyhow, that nut is an 8 millimeter. And we'll repeat the process on the other side. The shuttle is the part that goes back and forth and makes the diaphragm work and we're going to slide that out. There's coils on either side and there's magnets in the shuttle and so it's a little difficult to get out of there. There's the other part of that diaphragm and just slide it out. Okay, so I'll clean this up a little bit and you'll see this tab sticking out the top of this. And the way this works is this oscillates back and forth and pumps the diaphragm on either end alternately. But when a diaphragm fails and it tears, like you see here, it lets this move too far. And when that happens, 
these tabs break this small plastic screw and when that screw breaks this contact comes free and it shuts off the power so it prevents this thing from tearing itself up and so this little sacrificial screw acts like a mechanical fuse if you will and when this shuttle is moving too far because a diaphragm broke it hits this screw breaks it and that shuts the unit off and that's usually when your alarm will go off and tell you that your pumps not working so uh, I'm gonna clean everything up here and uh, this gasket down here between this and the lower deck doesn't look great so I am going to go ahead and replace that also now your kit will come with a new plastic screw and you get one of these be very very careful you don't accidentally break it installing it because if you do you'll have to order another and another one of these is four or five dollars and of course you'll have to wait for it to come in so you only get one chance with these be very careful all right I'm going to separate this plate from the lower chamber Okay, so I've removed the six screws around the perimeter and I need to pry this top part loose. And and that's why I want to go ahead and replace that. You see how brittle this has become. So I'm going to get everything cleaned up and start the reassembly. Everything's nice and clean, so let's start putting this back together. Now, it's real important that you scrape off all the old gasket here so you get a good seal between all the chambers and around the perimeter. And here's our new gasket. And this part here where the power cord comes in, that's where this oval hole goes. And you can see there's a couple of pins here that help you align everything so you know you've got it right if those pins fall into the holes like they should and all your screw holes line up. So we've got that in place. Now we're going to put on the motor assembly but we've got to disconnect these wires because they have to pass through this hole here. So these are going to be disconnected now. And I need a Phillips screwdriver for the ground wire. Let me move this over so you get a better view. You have to pull these little connectors through the hole one at a time. They won't all go through at once. Okay. I'm going to set that aside for a moment. And now we're going to run our wires through this hole and seat this rubber grommet right down there where it goes. All right. Make sure our gasket's flying nice and flat and now we're going to fish those wires back through this hole one at a time and of course it's getting a little snug getting that last one through is going to be a little tight there we go we got our wires through now we're going to line up Our little pins here in these holes and check your gasket I can see the gaskets pulled back a little bit here
make sure your gasket is nice and even all the way around and all your holes line up nicely. You don't want this gasket to be bunched or pinched or anything like that. Okay, that looks great. Now then, I'll pass my ground wire back under the motor assembly. Put that screw back in. Reconnect white to white, black to black. So that's done. All right, I'll put my screws back in that hold the two pieces together here. Okay, we're going to swing these out of the way here. Now we're going to slide the shuttle back into position. And remember, we've got some strong magnets here. It's going to, it's going to fight us a little bit. All right, that's pretty close. Okay, we've got our shuttle installed and get it about the right height as much as you can. Uh, it's going to, when you install it, it's going to go to one side. There's no way to really fight that. So we're going to go ahead and put in our new pump housing. Now you can buy aftermarket parts, but I like to go ahead and get the genuine high blow brand parts. Now, this part needs to point towards this hose. And you'll see there's a little notch here. And the diaphragm has a tab on it. So this goes on like this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our nut on here and it gives you a new replacement washer and a lock nut in the kit. All right, I want to pause for a moment here and point out a couple of things. The shuttle is rectangular on the end and it fits into this little groove here so make sure you've lined that up properly. We've got the tab of the diaphragm pointing towards the hose. All right we've got our chamber here and we've got the notch on it. We're going to put it there. Now then on the back side of this diaphragm there's a circular ridge and there's a circular hole here and so we're going to push this until that is in the proper position. Now the magnets on that shuttle are going to fight you, but you can get it in there. And once you do, go ahead and get a couple of screws started. This honestly is the hardest part of the whole thing, is getting this thing in there. Okay, we got a couple of screws threaded. It's not going to move on us. So let's go ahead and put all four screws in place. Now as you tighten these screws, check there should not be any gap between the metal and this plastic part, nor should there be any gap between the two parts of the air pump. So just take your time and get the screws snug. They don't have to be super tight and check your work. Okay, now once one side is done, the other side is so much easier. We've got our tab pointing towards our air hose here. Okay, the last part is to install this little plastic screw that holds these contacts in place. So here's the plastic screw we're going to install. 
And this is, like I said, sort of a mechanical fuse that if the shuttle moves too far, it breaks this screw and it shuts the pump off. Um, now it's really pretty clever the way they've made this. There's some threads and then there's a gap in a thread, so you can't really over tighten this. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass this through the hole here at the top of the pump. It's going to go through the hole in this contact and through the hole in this little blade here. So you can see when the nut is tightened, it holds these pieces together. When the screw breaks, they separate. Now the way you put this on is you position the nut in place over the ends of the threads and with a flat blade screwdriver, you turn the screw. Now I really wish they'd give you a couple of these, but they just give you the one. I guess they want to make sure you buy a new rebuild kit if you break one. So be careful, take your time. And that will tighten up just so much. And then you'll hear the little nut has reached the end of the threads and won't tighten anymore. So that's it. We're going to plug it in and test it now. Okay, it's working great. Let's finish the assembly. These clamps have to be upright. This sound blanket goes on. Now I've cleaned the inside of this and there is an arrow on the inside that goes towards the pump outlet. So we've got that in place. Let's put those screws in. Install the new air filter. This kit came with gaskets. They're a little bit different than what's in my unit, so I'm not going to be able to install these today. And uh, I'll see if I can buy these gaskets separately and come back and do that at a later time. I put today's date on here. Some septic companies will either try to sell you a new pump or charge you a lot of money to rebuild a pump. And it's not difficult to do. You can do it yourself and the pump can be rebuilt many, many times. This pump was originally manufactured in 2004. So this is 18 years old now and it's been rebuilt many times. I rebuilt it several times before I started writing the date on here. So you don't have to buy a new pump when one of these dies. It's very simple to rebuild it yourself. The last part of your pump rebuild should be to go ahead and replace your battery in your alarm. I also installed a switch on my alarm so I can disable it and I don't have to listen to that thing squawk while I try and take it apart and uh, take out the battery. So don't forget to replace your alarm battery when you rebuild your pump. I hope you found this helpful. Please like and subscribe if you did.